you you mentioned that you know fans were a little whatever but hurt and people were giving you know saying that oh it's just because she's trans you know that's why she gets through you opened up fully about your life on this show you know you went into detail and that was such a pivotal moment especially for me like seeing somebody talk so um openly about themselves and that was the first time that I actually think that I saw besides I think like Chaz Bono back in like surreal life or something like that that there was somebody on television that I was like wow this is somebody else in my community that I have not heard a voice from before like I'm so used to one side of you know being in Atlanta or doing this but I had never heard such an open and honest conversation. Did you feel well, pressure? To have that conversation? Mm -hmm. mm, you know, I was already out as trans be years beforehand. So there was no like ability for me to like talk about my life as if I wasn't mm -hmm. trans and out. Um, and so I knew that when I was preparing to go for the show, I had to mentally prepare for, okay, you're going to have a conversation about being trans at some point, because it's not something that's that typical on the show. And there certainly are lots of um, uh, girls who have appeared on the show who, who are trans, who identified as trans. And um, certainly there's definitely some who've come out as trans since then, but there weren't a lot of examples to look to. So I, do, I, I knew that it was not the, con the norm. Um, and so, and by that regard, I really wanted, I felt some pressure. For, I wanted to perform well. I wanted people in the trans and the LGBTQ community to be proud of me. And I wanted, um, I also wanted, I knew that the show had a mainstream audience mm -hmm. and, and I wanted those folks to, to be able to see someone who's trans just doing their thing, especially just coming out of, you know, 2016, 20, 2015 and 2016, there was a lot of conversation online about um, what words that were appropriate words to use that also describe the trans community, transgender people, and whether or not those words should be on the show, because they had been featured on the show before. And uh, I remember the backlash. There was there was like some statements in the news and some stuff that was really harmful um, some stuff I think was just not very empathetic. And it certainly didn't make me feel like, well, let, come on, trans girls, let's go to drag race. Because it was not, that was not the feeling. <laughs> but they called, I had, I had already sent in my audition tape and they called me. Um, and so I, you know, said, let me make sure I put a good foot forward and, you know, do my best to talk about it. And of course I was worried because I didn't know who these queens would be that I was going to be in the room with. But when we you know, sat down and had a conversation, I discovered that they were very, very um, just open. And they are also a bunch of queer, gender expansive people themselves, some non-binary folks. Um, you know, five or six of the girls on the show at the time identified as non-binary, um, which I had never seen on Drag Race either. And so I was like, okay, this is the right cast for me. <laughs> And you, you mentioned like, you know, there was like the phrases and things that, you know, people kind of got upset about, you know, the she and stuff like that. Looking at your time on the show and then what came after, and there were mm -hmm. comments that were made about like, you know, performance enhancing drugs and the Olympics and stuff like that. <laughs> Did that kind of feel like a slap in the face to already be on the show and then that said after? Yeah, it did. Um, I'll have to say, I think it did feel like a, a little bit of a slap in the face, mostly because, um, you know, I, I I made sure that I wanted to make sure that my performance on the show was. It, it's just so strange. You like the, it was somewhere between if you're a trans woman and you do drag, then it's not it's you're you know, it's boring and we don't want to see you because you're just a woman and, you know, and, and, you know, you're, you're, you don't have for some, you don't have the zeal and zest. It's not as exciting 
And then you go from that to, oh, but if you are on the show, it's cheating because you've had surgeries and, and you've had your lips plumped and your, and your curves, your hips curvy and your, in this done it. And a trans person who has surgery is cheating because they're not using makeup. It should just be makeup. Manly men turning into makeup. And I'm like, wait a minute. What? what, Detox? Mm -hmm. You know, on my season, Trinity, I mean, there's so many folks who, regardless of how they identify, are very vocal about having had plastic surgery to enhance their body for when they're in drag. And they go to the same doctors that trans girls do. What is the difference? <laughs> um, I, I do want to ask you to clear up one rumor that I saw. And if you do not want to speak on it, I can easily edit this out. Is it okay. true that the show asked you to go off hormones when you were on there? Oh, my gosh. My blouse is opening and no one told me. <laughs> what on earth is going on up in here? <laughs> um, isn't that a strange moment? Hold on, let me just fix this because that's too much. Oh, titties flying out. Uh, no, the show did not mention my hormones at all. Um, at, at all. I knew that I was going to go film something. I filmed things before. Um, so <laughs> the show did not ask me to do anything with my hormones. Um, I, w I knew I was going to go film a show and I, the situation was that I knew this is long story short, when you are on a medication and you know that you're going to travel for more, potentially more than a month, you're packing. It's not like I could pack there and only bring an, one night's worth of stuff and then be like, oh, I have to go back home and get more. You're stuck there. You don't have a phone. You're closed off. So everything you're going to need and do has to be taken care of before you go. And so I, in, in an attempt to kind of streamline my life, <laughs> um, instead, because I wasn't going to be able to go to the doctor and get prescriptions refilled and go and do that. So I just um, did a really big dose <laughs> of the medication, which with my doctor was was safe. Um, and it lasted me the entire time that I need. And you go, being on hormones or not is life-saving and is crucial, but it's only, it's mostly, it's life-saving for the mental health of primarily of, of people who are trans. I mean, that, that is connected to physical, but it's not like it was like heart medication or yeah. something, you know? And so whether going on or off doesn't mean that I, oh, I did, I skipped my, um, treatment today. I'm not trans just for today. Like what? You know, it's, I'm still the same person. And so I think, you know, people were so, I knew that people would be really hung up on this conversation about trans people being passable and looking like a convincing woman. And in order to do that, you have to have hormones and surgery. And until you do that, you're just a man. And I think that's what the conversation had been. And I knew that like, even with all of the surgery, there's some people that are like, you can get all the surgery you want, you're still a man. And so I wanted to remove that other people giving me permission to be a woman based on what they think about the surgeries that I may or may not have had or the hormones that I may or may not be taking. I'm a woman because, I, because I'm a woman and I tell you I'm a woman, that's what it is. Not because I did a dose that you thought I could do or that I, oh, you're not doctors, you know what I mean? So, you know, who cares what my prescriptions were? Like, as long as I was healthy and feeling good about myself, then that's what, that's all it needs to be taken into consideration. <clears throat> but this whole entire conversation about trans people um, being allowed into spaces, be, we'll give you permission if you convince us that, that you're doing enough of the work to make us feel comfortable about your appearance. That is a crock of... So no, the show did not ask me to do anything. There really wasn't much conversation about much <laughs> going on to that show. They were like, hi, you're on the show. Here's your ticket. Don't bring this and bring this and we will see you there. That's it. And so I don't think anyone got, I mean, you know, I would be very upset 
if I'd found out that they were having conversations about all of the girls' medications and dosage except for mine. Then that would be something to talk about. Mm -hmm. But we weren't. I don't think they were going down and like, so did you take your um, your diabetes medication too? Like they weren't doing that. What is this conversation? So, <laughs> so no, they did not. You know, they did not ask me about it. 